Matthew, please give it a rest. I voted to remain, but unfortunately I was outvoted. However, I believe in democracy. Therefore, I have now accepted that we're out. The reason Brexit has been difficult is because of people like you that have refused to support the democratic vote. <laughs> So it's my fault the thing I said wouldn't work, doesn't work. Like, fascinating. Like I said, I voted to remain. I wish there'd never been a referendum. If we had another referendum tomorrow, my vote would be to leave. Well, there's a curious one. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really interesting thought from Leo that I'm single-handedly responsible for, for ruining the Brexit that I said would never work because there was no plan. But that's not what we're talking about, Leo. What we're talking about is Sir Keir Starmer, who has been leader of uh, His Majesty's opposition, who may end up being prime minister, refusing to allow any discussion about Brexit. Unless you forget, Leo, we did have a vote in 1975 in which we joined the common market, joined the customs, got involved in all of that, overwhelming majority. Did that stop the leavers? No, did it shut them up? No. You know, we have an ongoing discussion. A discussion, though, that the Labour leader has decided must stop. Well, Lance Foreman is a businessman, former MEP for London for the Brexit Party and later for the Conservatives and joins me now. Morning, Lance. Good morning to you. Um, are you, are you hesitant or, or concerned about discussing Brexit, how we might improve it? Um, well, it certainly does need to be improved because, um, you know, it was the right thing to do, but we actually haven't seized any of the potential advantages of Brexit. So, yeah, there are lots of things we should do. We should be deregulating. We should have uh, a proper free trade deal with Europe. Um, so, yeah, we should be doing all these things. But um, the thought of actually rejoining the EU is absolutely absurd. Yeah, well, um, if, it's if, crazy if, for us to be going over old ground again. But of course, we should always be trying to improve our, you know, ourselves as a nation. I, I, I concur. I, I might have a different view on Brexit, but I, I, I believe we should talk about how we can improve things. So it begs the question then, Lance, is, is Keir Starmer wrong to... I mean, I can understand why he might be hesitant to talk about Brexit because of the criticism that may follow. But to say, you know, not really going to talk about it at all because of, of turmoil, that... that seems like he's he's running away from the issue to me. Well, the thing is, the EU itself has changed, and it's changing. You know, Europe is changing right now. There, there is a move in Europe to the right and also against the EU. So, you know, once we left the EU, once we Brexited, the EU did try to punish us. But, you know, we might find in time that we find, um, if the EU continues to exist into the long term or not, we actually might find European nations being much more willing to actually work with us going forward. So, I, I, you know, sorry, Lance, it, it, I didn't, I didn't ask about any, I, I just asked about Keir Starmer, actually. So I just oh, asked Keir him whether he's run away from the issue. Well, I don't know if he's running away from the issue or not, but I think, the, you know, if he's trying to sort of tie us into EU institutions and build a sort of closer relationship in that way, I think that would be a really bad idea. Mm -hmm. And that's not what the British people wanted. They wanted our sovereignty. They wanted us to be able to make decisions of our own. They don't want but it having... now, though, do they, according to all the polls? <laughs> they hate it. They, they hate what? Brexit. No, no, well, I don't. I don't think they hate it. I think they. they, they well, can you find me any polls delivered. that? Can you find me any well, polls that suggest the majority of people like Brexit? Then, because I haven't seen any. Well, you know, I think people pe people feel disappointed the way in which we voted for Brexit, but it's actually never been properly delivered, and that's completely understandable. You know, if it had been done properly, um, and we had actually seized the advantages, I mean, you know, we haven't deregulated one EU rule. It's absolutely mad. And this was one of the advantages. We don't have, you know, a pure free trade with the EU like the Canadians did. You know, the Canadians signed yes. a free trade agreement with uh, the EU and well, we didn't. So, and, and it was partly, it wasn't completely our fault. It was partly because of the way the negotiations have unfolded and the EU trying to punish us because they didn't want other people to leave the EU. But the you, EU don't, you don't think that leaving now, the club, you don't think leaving a club that you then lose the advantages that came with the club. It's not really a punishment. No, no, it's just you want, signed up and paid for advantages which you then no longer have. It's a bit rich well, to say we're being punished because this is the consequence of Brexit isn't it, that well, we're no think, longer in the car? I don't think they're necessarily advantages. Actually, you know, if you look, you know, the, the biggest country in the EU is Germany. And if you look at German growth since the date of the referendum today, it's actually been weaker than British growth. How is Italian so, and Fr French growth? Well, I don't think the French have grown as fast as us either, actually. And in fact, just recently, you know, the... Um, the, the, the London Stock Exchange has outgrown the French having, you know, gone the other way. So these things are an ever-moving feast. And I just think we need to move on, you know. We need to just well, move, but move on and talk or, or not talk because it keeps coming back to Keir Starmer that if he is our Prime Minister... Yeah. He is essentially saying there will be no discussion about Brexit in any direction. Well, I think what he's saying, I think what he's saying is that we're not going to have another referendum, which, you know, of course, 
make sense. It would be pointless going through all that again. I don't think anybody wants that. It was like going through COVID again. <laughs> Nobody wants that. But of course, we should always, you know, you know, the French government's changing, German government's changing, people change. And we have to, you know, it's, you, know you can't keep looking backwards. You've got to look but forward. That, you know, we this can is, improve this is ourselves what, as a nation. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about looking backwards. I, I, I'm, I'm broadly with you. I just, I don't agree about Brexit, but I'm broadly with you in terms of We've got to improve it. And Keir Starmer isn't talking about any of the things that you imply. He's not talking about uh, a, another referendum. Uh, he's not talking about He's not talking about anything. And that's the problem. He's not well, talking Keir about anything. He generally doesn't talk about anything. You're absolutely right. He just talks about one thing and then completely flip-flops onto something else, uh, depending on which way the polls move. So, uh, you know, I don't know what Keir Starmer's views are because he keeps changing them the whole time. So I don't know what his thoughts are on Europe. And, you know, it, it might be a shocker when he gets in. It might not. We don't know because Keir Starmer can't hold down the line for more than two minutes. Would you like Parliament to discuss new ways to improve Brexit, a free debate. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, I think we should Me be too. deregulating heavily. Absolutely. Why not? You know, we, we should be seizing the advantages of actually being independent. And some people might like some of the things, some might not. But of course, we should have a debate about that. Absolutely. You see, so there we go. I find myself agreeing with you, Lance, a Brexit and polar opposites on Brexit itself. But I do feel... I'm with Michael Hesseltine. Again, Michael Hesseltine, I, 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 I hated him back in the days of Thatcher. I literally considered him as sort of um, just a, a force for evil. And yet we change, as you yourself have said, Lance, politics changes. And he, he argues, as, as I said in my introduction, that there is nothing in, in the sort of British political domain, no Whitehall department that isn't affected by Brexit. And therefore, we can't improve these departments unless we look at some of the issues concerned with Brexit. So Lance and I may be on completely different hymn sheets, but I think we're both looking in the same direction, which is how can we make it better? And if, as I suspect, there are no advantages to Brexit whatsoever, then hopefully, after a proper parliamentary debate, we can start ticking off some of the things that don't work and buying into things that maybe do.